There are many words in the English language, and I feel confident enough to say that I knew many of them before. But there are a lot that I have learned about in Australia. And now I want to share with you my top six words that I have learned about, and some of them I even implemented into my everyday language. So at the end of this video, I will try to form one sentence containing all the words that I'm covering in this video. And this is gonna be fun, I think. <laughs> So before we dive into it, there are two things that I want to make clear. The first thing is, it might be that these words are actually being used in other countries as well. The second thing is, I didn't do any research on these words. I just picked them up in everyday situations. And I just want to tell you about what I think these words mean. I don't want to read any comments about, this is not what the word means, you should have done some research, idiot. No, because this is not what the video is about, alright? Let's give it a go. The first word is... Chuck. And no, I'm not talking about the Norris guy. <laughs> Chuck essentially means, when you really break it down, to move one object to a different place, really. So you can use that in a lot of different ways. Either say, hey, could you chuck me that? To tell someone to give you a certain object. Or you can also say, oh, don't worry about the boxes, just chuck them in the shed. But then also you can use Chuck if you want to dump something. For example, you ask someone if he still needs that thing and he would be like, I oh, don't know, just chuck it. The next word is actually three words, it's kind of an expression. It's good on you. Good on you is essentially a positive expression to tell someone that you approve what he did and you say, I'm happy for you. Good on you. So I remember when I first heard that expression, it was when I was working as a waiter in a cafe and there was this one guy sitting on his table, he was waiting for his coffee. So eventually I brought him the coffee, flat white for you sir. He looked at me and said, ah, good on ya. And to me it felt like there was a certain undertone to his good on ya. The way he said it, I thought that he was unhappy with the service. I thought it would mean something like good for you, in terms of good for you that you brought me my coffee because I was just about to complain. And I was like, okay, rude? You weren't even waiting that long. As the day continued, it was it was my first day actually. More and more people said, Oh good on you. Good on you. Here's your coffee. Good on you. And I thought, no way, all these people are unhappy with my service. So it must be a positive thing. <laughs> the next word I wanna be talking about is thongs. And to be completely transparent with you guys, I knew the word thongs before, but thongs to me meant something different to what Australians use that word for. So before I came to Australia, thongs looked to me like this. But in Australia, thongs are the things that you wear on your feet. Not like this. Thongs are also a big part of the Australian culture. You just see them everywhere. But there is a funny story about thongs that I would like to share with you. Funny story time! So I have just arrived in Australia and I did not know people were using the word thongs for these things. Actually, when I think about it now, I didn't even know what word I used for them before. However, to me it was a new thing that people would use the word thongs for these Thongs. To me, it kind of felt strange to call these things thongs because in my head, thongs were something different. Then one day, I had to buy some thongs. So I went to Big W, which is a big store that has a lot of stuff that you don't need, but for some reason buy anyways. And they were just about to close. So I ran to the entrance and there was this employee standing at the entrance. And I told him, I said, mate, I just need some thongs. I'm, I'll be out in two minutes. And he looked at me and I looked at him. And he looked at me, and I looked at him. And there was this awkward silence. And to me, it still felt strange to say thongs. And then I said to myself, did I pronounce that correctly? Or does he take me for the biggest weirdo? But then he said, oh yeah, no worries, mate, they are back there. And I grabbed my thongs and went out. <laughs> so the next word I find very hilarious, to be honest, it's Sheila. So Sheila essentially is a word for woman. And I personally think, or the way I have picked it up, is it's a generally negative word for a woman. Like, ah, oh, the other day that Sheila ran to my car, right? Something like that. I, I have never heard someone talking about a Sheila in a positive way. Like, ah, oh, I met a very lovely Sheila the other day. But I might be mistaken. So if you can use Sheila in other ways, variations, please let me know. I am so happy to learn. The next word I'm quite certain is not a Australia exclusive word. Actually, I think it's just a general English word, but it is so connected to the Australian lifestyle as I have experienced it, that it just can't not be in this list. And the word is ute. So a ute is a car that looks like this. 
To me, it appeared like in Australia, every second car is a Ute. And I personally have never really understood why so many people were driving Utes. Like when you're a farmer and you just need to chuck some shovels in the back of the Ute or whatever. Of course, quite useful. But I have seen so many people that would just drive Utes as camping cars with a rooftop tent on top of them, as family cars. I don't know if you have just heard that car, but there was a Ute passing by, even though I'm in New Zealand right now. <laughs> Pretty ironic. So I hope no one takes that offensive. You all know that I love Australia beyond explanation, but there is just that one thing that I just never understood about Utes, why so many Australians seem to have an obsession with Utes. There is even a Christmas song. I don't know how popular it is. My Australian friend, he played it on Christmas. It was an Rusty Holden Ute, something. I, I can't think of it right now. A few of you might actually know it, but yeah. So there is a thing with Australia and Utes. And since it is a very Australian thing to drive a Ute, it, it just had to be in the list. All right, last word. Also an expression made of two words. I have never heard that expression before. And I think it is exclusive to Australia. I'm talking about fair dinkum. And this is actually the first word that I had to ask what it meant because I just could not imagine what it means. Additionally to that, I have only heard about this word at the end of my Australian trip. So I have been traveling Australia for one year and just about two weeks before I was about to leave Australia, this lady used the word fair dinkum. And I said, I have never heard about that before. What does that mean? And I said, could you write that down for me? Because I couldn't imagine how you spell that word. Usually my mind, my brain is Englified enough so that when I hear a word, I kind of have a good imagination of how I would write it. But with fair dinkum, I didn't have the slightest imagination of how am I supposed to spell that. <laughs> so fair dinkum is a generally positive expression for someone who is a good person, really. And I think really that's it. You would say, oh, he's a very fair dinkum guy. Like he's, he's a good, honest guy. It's really just a positive expression for a person. I don't know, can you say it to animals as well? Oh, I have such a fair dinkum cat. Oh, I'm a bit afraid of dogs. Don't worry, I have such a fair dinkum dog. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. I would love to know. All right, guys, now the moment that you have all been waiting for. I will try to put all these words into one sentence and try to say it with the strongest Australian accent that I can do. I'm not saying that I can do an Australian accent and I hope no one finds this offensive. I don't mean it offensive. And if you want, you can rate on a scale from zero to 10 how much I nailed the accent or not, if you want. However, let's give it a go. Hey, Mike, the other day I chucked my thongs on the back of the ute, but then I drove over a portal and they flew out and hit that Sheila directly in the face. But she was a fat income lady, she said I wouldn't have to worry about it. Oh, I got on your mind. Alright, technically it was two sentences, but what are you gonna do about it?